So what's up, family? So we're here at the gyms, giving everyone my science symposium. First one, just kicking it off. And um, yeah, tonight is going to be really fun. I always like to share as much information as possible. So that's what this is all about. And tonight I'm just going to be pouring, pouring, pouring. So I'm going to kick it off right now with, um, with a piano tune as people are coming in. Uh, one of the songs from the Key Reflections Project, uh, Yellows of Spring. So just going to kind of get the environment started with that. And hope you all enjoy. Okay, you don't want to kick it on there. Just, you, you, you kick something different.
digest. So that tune is called uh, Yellows of Spring. And uh, yes, the, it's actually the, the lead cut, well, number two on this project. I see. Yeah, the number one. I got it. Yes, sir, my man. So yeah, number one, that was uh, Yellows of Spring. And um, it was actually originally the first tune on the project. Um, at the end of this project, I actually wrote the intro to, the, to it. So after all the songs were written, then the intro came at the very end. Yeah. Yeah. I know I heard it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this is the one I put on Facebook. And uh, yeah, this. so that song was actually written as, a, um, as an improvisation uh, in April. Let's see, it was a spring morning in April. And myself and Ama, we were at this place called uh, Oneness Center um, in Columbia. Mm -hmm. And um, we were there, we, we would share like original music there a couple times a month. So for the like meditation, I always, I always just flow, just kind of like whatever I feel. And so before I left that morning, because I'm a spring baby, I put on like a yellow shirt, right? I was in my spring mood. Very seldom am I like ever like, thinking about it like that. You know? But I was in my spring mood. So, anyway, I put that on. Um, I'm sitting down at the piano. I start playing, and this is the tune that came out. And when I finished, I was like, man, that's so good. Like, I can't just let that go. So, I wrote music, I wrote the chart, and everything. Yellow's the spring. That's what it was. Yeah. Same way. Thank y'all for coming and hang out with the brother. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into all of them for how we can talk about the music. So, gems, right? Gems, as you can see, is for giving everyone my signs. And, uh, test, test, two, 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 two. And, Basically, this concept came about because I am a giving, a freely giving and sharing person, right? Everybody that I meet, at some point in the journey, my goal is to share anything that I know with them, anything that can help them on their journey, right? So, I guess I've been doing that since all the way back, since I was like 13, 14, and 15, you know, and, um, that's always been my personality. So I have a motto, what I know you know, right? And if there's anything that I know that I can share with you, you will know. So that's how this all came about. And then at some point when I started my uh, podcast, I was like, you know what? I want to take this from it being just something that I share one-on-one -on -one with people to something that I share with the world. And I started doing it on my podcast as uh, a segment of my podcast. So for those that have never heard the podcast before, it's called the Aaron Hill Podcast. And you can check it out anywhere online. Just Google it. And um, I started having these conversations. So y'all know in the African-American community, gems is like if somebody's dropping gems, you say they're dropping knowledge, right? So I pretty much use it as a double entendre. One was dropping knowledge, the other was as the African, giving everyone my science. So, ever since I started that concept, I've had, I've had at least about 30, at least 30 um, episodes on my podcast of gems with different people, different times, uh, all different backgrounds. So, sharing information for me is kind of like, it's kind of like playing genres of music, right? Um, I'm into jazz. I'm into, in fact, I'm a, well, I would put my music on, but I'm a hip hop. So I'm into hip hop, right? That's where it all kicked off for me. Then uh, got into classical jazz, all that kind of stuff. And um, I have an equal respect for different genres and styles of music. So when it comes to having conversation and sharing information, working with different people from different backgrounds, you know, people that are entrepreneurs, all the way to people that are, they're just a good cooks, you know, what have you. Sharing information 
for different people is like different genres of music. Right? So I have a lot of fun doing that. So that's what this is all about. And um, from the podcast, I was like, you know what? Eventually, I want to do this as a live event where I basically get to do the same thing, but in a live environment. And the benefit of it is that any information that I give one person is something that everybody can use because we're all working with the same resources and tools. We're all just doing, you know, we're cooking up different dishes with it. Some people are into radio, right? Some people are into videography. Some people are entrepreneurs, you know, some people are creatives. But in today's world, all of us have the same internet, all of us have the same social media. We all got the same smartphones, right? And um, so it's my goal to help everybody to maximize the tools and resources for whatever they're trying to do. So from the podcast came Jim's Live. So that's the concept. Um, so what I wanted to do to even kick it off was just kind of get to know everybody, say what's up to everybody, and kind of everybody just say like who you are. So Stuff here, with my brother Issa. <laughs> peace to you. Peace to you. An elder in the community. Reminds me a lot of my dad. Much respect. <laughs> Much respect. <laughs> Good to see you today, too. Yeah. Yusef is uh, Yusef Braxton Bay, is my name. And, Yusef uh, Braxton Bay. I have trained, or uh, well, I have been over the years. Mark. Okay. Uh, Joel. You're Joel about trade. Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, I've been involved in community organizing right. the uh, development right. over the years in the city. Yeah. Uh, quite a few years. Okay. I've been involved with uh, uh, um, um, helping some prisoners get out of prison. Okay. Uh, political prisoners. Okay. And Conway being okay. one. Okay. When you say helping prisoners to get out of prison, you know, you don't know how to be able to help people escape jail, like well, going through the tunnel. No, I'm just joking. You know, just, <laughs> hey, bro, how you feeling? Good to see you. Helping them to liberate right. themselves, to yeah. exonerate themselves in many cases, and, um, right. uh, and, and return to the community to be able to do work in the community and right. help other brothers stay out and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're not using that for community activism. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, appreciate that. I mean, it's a struggle. I know it is. Sure. But I would probably, I, if I were to ask you, I mean, you said how many years? 20, over 25, well, over 30. Over 35. Yeah. So it's a struggle, but obviously it's, it's, it's been worth it every step of the way. It's involved me in uh, historic preservation. Okay. Uh, it's taught me so much right. about our people, our community, right. uh, how to accomplish things, how to turn things around. Right. So I've been involved in a number of organizations and energy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. it I, feel like, I feel like talking to you is like talking to someone who served in the Army. Or served in it. Yeah, it's service. Really? Because it's, it's the, yeah. It's been and, and, yeah, and that's why I say that. Yes, sir. You know, because of the debt that you're paying to society. So I honor you. I salute you for that. Okay, thank yeah. You. Brother Mark. What's happening, man? Good to see you. I'm Mark yeah. Walker. Good to see you, bro. Yeah, pleasure, man. Pleasure. Um, am I speaking up for the camera, too? Just, just, just be it. Yeah. So I, um, <laughs> Yeah, so, um, uh, by trade, I am a software developer for uh, AT&T, but right. also as a moonlighting. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Software developer AT&T, yeah, okay. You know, yeah. Technical background. Gotcha. Okay. Software development. Software engineer. But also, I moonlight as a um, uh, uh, programmer for gospel, jazz, mm -hmm. programmer for the EA. Yeah, we're doing that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm Yeah, five or six p.m. Yeah. And that's why I know Aaron from uh, using some of his 
so we can go back. Yeah, that's that's quite a way. Yeah. And uh, I'm here to get some knowledge, man, on uh, trying to expand the brand. Right. Um, and uh, I'm not much of a social media dude. You know, I get on just to do what I got to do. Right. But I know it's necessary to uh, grow the brand, to grow yeah. the and brands. Right. And so I'm here to expand. Um, and uh, just trying to see some of the things that you've done to fix your brand. Right. You know, and that's, you know, that's a specific question. I'm so excited to just come in here and support you. Yeah. I've been saying, you know, he gets me sent me invites for stuff around town, and I'm never in town. And I'm actually in town tonight, and I said, I'm going to stop by and go for you and some small my brothers. So that's how you And I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, the, ten the tenure of knowing you has been great, man. I yeah. really, I really thank you and appreciate you for all the support wow. over the years, man. Of the music and the cause, man. Yeah, it yeah. really means a lot. So. The music is good, you know I say. It is good, I'm going to play it. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So, I tell all the artists. Yeah. So, I really appreciate that, man. And for you to be here, to be honest, it's, it's not, it's not many people in the radio field that really understand, even if they aren't a part of it, that they understand that getting a grasp of social media to further the brand and right. that kind of thing is really the way and I'm gonna be honest, man. In many ways, radio has to really wake up. Oh yeah, you get it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, gonna, we definitely want to talk about that. But yeah, radio really has to wake up because, man, things are changing so fast, you know, and the listenership is changing heavily because the attention is going in a different direction. So. Yeah, it's, it's really important. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's good to have you here, and that's it. Even, even represent the community, because mm -hmm. to be honest, you're gonna be able to take back a lot of information to share with the with the radio world in general. You know, and then right. Right. You know, so, yeah. yeah, and then like you said, to be able to to be able to go past traditional radio and have a presence, you know, online and build from that platform. Yeah, it's just so significant. So Leslie, Leslie, I know you did a videotape, bro, but uh, <laughs> but you been on it too, man. Leslie Hendricks, visual effects, right? <laughs> so so Leslie and I go way back to 2006 is when we first met, and the name of his company is Visual Effects. Of course, he's got great videography services. If y'all ever know anybody in need corporate events, private events, public pulling out. And uh, yeah, him and I, we chop it up too. We chop it up a lot. Um, so yeah, so that's what this is about. So there's gonna be more people pouring in, so we're just keeping it right on going. I'm trying to get into what's the night is about. <laughs> All right, Leslie Hendricks, my man. How you doing? <laughs> Good to see you, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure, man. It's been over ten years now, bro. It's been over ten years. Going strong. <laughs> So, when I think about yeah. these right here, yeah, yeah, I can, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, um, so basically, you know, so this is the first of many of these kinds of events, right? The goal is to get it going. Hello to everybody that's online, all the viewership, everybody out there. Um, so this is the this is the first of many, 
the goal is to have this every quarter, right? And the most important thing, and here we go with the genres, where it kind of flows. When I say, who is this event for? Grandmothers with the best kept secrets and wisdom. I mean, best kept secret recipes. That's secret recipes and wisdom. Small business owners desiring more sales and profit. Community organizations, churches desiring more community awareness. Entrepreneurs and self-employed individuals in need of new branding strategies. Musicians, artists performing and creating daily. Kids, teens desiring guidance on becoming influencers, YouTubers, etc. Successful business women and men of yesteryear, pre-social media and internet, and then of course anyone in general who values information. So I'm gonna go back down this list and just kind of talk about it uh, slowly. So why do I say grandmothers with the best kept uh, recipes and wisdom? So when I was thinking about putting this whole concept together, the first thing I thought is that like many people are gonna say, well, you know, we see you every day on social media, so we know you do this for a living. We know that's what you do, but that's not really what I do. So I don't really know how I can utilize the information. But this word right here, legacy, right? I should have did a whole slide by itself. Hey, hey. have a seat, take your pitch. <laughs> so you know. This whole concept, this whole concept is about a word that's on this slide, building legacy. This whole thing is about legacy. And it's the reason that word really motivates me. Uh oh, microphone down, okay. <laughs> that word really, really motivates me. Legacy motivates me like y'all wouldn't believe. Uh, let's see what's going on. That's two, 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 two. Everybody in here, everybody in here has a legacy that they're gonna leave, right? For those of us that are the older generation, the younger generation, everybody has legacy. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Let me, let me say hello, I'm sorry. See you. Hi, what's your name? Melody, hi Melody, nice to meet you. I'm Aaron, nice to meet you. And you? Symphony, how are y'all? My favorite people already. Symphony and Melody. So, so my daughter's name is Ari. So she was sitting right here. She would fit right in with uh, Symphony, Melody, and Ari. Do y'all know what Ari is? So Ari is actually a version of her name. It's a type of Melody, actually. So, yeah, so nice to meet you all. And we have <laughs> So right before you came in, uh, I just kind of had everybody to introduce themselves and just say, like, you know, who they are. What she into? <laughs> so this is brother Yusuf here. Yeah, brother Yusuf. And, uh, this is brother Mark. Mark also with uh, Melody and Symphony. And um, yeah, so Donetta, what are you, what what are you into? Also recorded too, and if you want to run out, right, you can. But um, 
Yeah, so I'll, so I'll go back and give a little bit of recap. I was basically saying that, you know, GEMS is giving everyone my signs. It's basically that over the last 17 years, I've been fortunate to learn a whole lot that has helped me do things that you all are trying to do. And so that's what this is all about. So the next thing I want to do really is talk about this word right here, building legacy, right? This whole thing is about legacy. And the thing I realized about legacy is that you know, it's very unique to each person. You know, legacy means something to everybody. Now, what I was gonna do, but the, the music is happening, I was gonna actually ask everybody to just kind of ponder on that word, you know, legacy, and just think about what it means to you. And I was gonna play a tune, and then we just kind of talk about it afterwards, but I'm gonna skip that, and then let's just go to like, what legacy is you know, for you, so. Take your pick. Who wants to go to who's, you know, what's legacy to you? Uh, what you say? Uh, legacy is, um, well, legacy is a, it's like a trail. It's a, <coughs> a path. And right. Uh, and this right. Uh, that highlights, emphasizes the connection that it has with this past. Right. Yeah. Say is your number one legacy goal. Legacy goal. Yeah. Right. And that's a big one. I can come back to you. <laughs> and that's a biggie. It's, it's broad. Yeah, it's broad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have a, a, a lot of interest in yeah. my legacy. But I, I would like to say something. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Anybody else? So I would think it would be something that you're all your, your distance offspring. Right. Be proud of. This is all going to be proud of. Yeah, it's something that, you know, your great you know, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. Right. Your, you know, your granddaddy. So it's, it's that. Yeah. And yeah. So let that place. How do you, and I mean, it's, it's cool for the world that we look at. You know, we know a lot of people who have right. legacies, you know. Right. Like, you know, like lots of comments. Like, like yes. Yeah. And that's cool. Right. You know, but tonight, it's not everybody's fault. You know what I mean? The world. Exactly. Right.
it's something I'm working on every day because we all know that our time is limited here. So it's like, okay, what's most important to me? What can I leave the world with that'll make the world a better place, that'll make things better for my successors, you know, than even myself and those before us. So I, I wake up every day thinking about legacy and everything I do is about that. You know, I just can't help it, I live in a breeze. So, I'm gonna go back to this slide. So who is this event for? And this was right before you came and I started talking about this. Number one book. Number one And my whole purpose for putting that is that I was telling that I don't want people to think that um, the information that I'm sharing is just about like business or that kind of thing. I mean, it's really for whatever you're trying to do. And the truth of the matter is, whether you become an entrepreneur or whether it, it's just that you have some memories that you want to pass down. In the 80s, what did we have for our memories? It was our beautiful photo albums with the laminated covers and our VHS tapes. Now we have HD quality pictures and we have the ability to create HD videos. So what that means is in the future, like our children's children, children, I mean, they can really see the depths of our lives and anything that we want to teach them, anything we want to pass down. And you don't have to be famous, that's the beautiful part. Everybody has a place in this. So, when I was writing this out, I put grandmothers with the best secret recipes and wisdom first because I wanted people, I, I really want people to use technology and social media to really just pass down all the information they have in creative ways. Um, the second, of course, is small business owners, people who are desiring more sales and profit, like there are many people who just want to understand how to bring more attention, you know, and awareness to their products and services. Community organizations, churches, you know, desiring more community awareness. I think that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Entrepreneurs, self-employed individuals in need of new strategies. Musicians and artists. So all the musicians and artists that you follow every day and that, you know, are my compadres, it's, we're all using it, but there's some other like really creative ways that we can use it in order to really make a big impact. Um, and then, kids and teens desiring to become uh, influencers. So, Melanie and Sydney, do you all, do you all follow any YouTubers? <laughs> I'm not gonna put you on the spot. I'm not gonna ask who. <laughs> but do you all watch YouTube? You know, I, okay. And so, the interesting thing, of course, and this is wild here, here this is starting to date my age when I was growing up. <laughs> so YouTube is, is really amazing because you get a chance to watch people from all the different like, walks of life that into like randomly different things. And it is really interesting. So you can find what you want to watch and be entertained. So there's a lot of kids and teens who desire to be YouTubers. I mean, it's actually a thing, right? It's a field now. Like, you have people getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, on YouTube. Um, so, the YouTubers that you all watch, do they have a lot of subscribers? That's like the new thing. How many subscribers do you have? <laughs> so, I'm willing to bet y'all probably know some people that's up in the millions of subscribers, right? Yeah. So, and, can I ask a question? Yeah, so, how they get paid? So, is it just number of viewerships? So, or are it, they going out and getting their uh, uh, sponsors right. and ads, and then is that what's all of the above? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the question is for everybody listening: How do these people get paid, and where is their revenue coming from? So it's all of the above. They get they get sponsorships. They get they have ads right that are in their videos. They. Uh, they also get uh, money from their viewers for different products and stuff when they sell merchandise and that kind of thing. Yeah, right, right. They get money from the amount of views that they have. And then a huge thing that we have today called influencer marketing. And, it, and, it, and it's actually one of the most fascinating aspects of our time, right? Which is that it's called influencer marketing, right? So it's real simple, but it's, it's amazing. It basically flipped, it, the, the internet has flipped the whole industry on its head. So what I mean by that is, 20 years ago, 
really it was like 15 years ago, because this is like, it was like that long ago. But 15, 20, 25, 30 years ago, if a brand like Nike wanted to, uh, if you wanted to become affiliated with them and you were trying to be in their commercial, you were trying to be on television, you were trying to be um, a person that was wearing their shoe and in their advertisements. But now it's actually flipped. Now what they're doing is they're coming to you because of the amount of people that you have and then they're paying you for you to have their product within your social media platform. They become sponsors of you. And you get paid to be the star of your own show. That's why this, this thing here, that's why so many teens are like, I want to be a YouTuber. Because if you if you are talented and you and you have something to offer and you really work hard, um, you can really get to the point where you can make a living and have the world coming to you, right to your platform. So they make money in a lot of different ways and it's, it's, it's why I get so excited even talking about this because we live in a time now where we as the creators are the one that have the leverage, right? The middle industry, tell them, I remember when I said this, right? In, in 2011, I was, um, I, I don't watch much TV, right? But in 2011, I was, I was hooked on the show 24. You remember the, 20, yeah, the show 24 yeah, yeah. with Jack? Yeah, so I happened to be like really hooked on that TV show and I watched one season. The next season came around and I was getting ready to watch the season premiere but I was watching something on YouTube. And then I missed the season premiere. I was like, all right, I'll catch it again next week. The next time it came on again, I was on YouTube watching something else. Before you know it, I missed the whole season. And it hit me at that moment, it was like, Television is getting ready to change. I was like, YouTube is actually now TV. And that was 2011, right? But what made me realize that was the only reason why I kept missing the show was because even though it was interesting, I got a chance on YouTube to tune in to things that was even more of my interest. And because you can find the, the niche and the nuances, I was able to, you know, I was, I was studying like philosophy really, really heavy at the time. And, and even when it came to TV, I only really watched a couple channels. It was like TLC, Discovery Channel, TV One, if I wanted to just kick back for entertainment, old black shows and that kind of thing. But I realized in 2011, I'm like, man, TV is really changing as we know it. The next thing that showed me that was looking at YouTube and in the middle of the show, what do you have? What do you, what do you have when y'all watching YouTube? And then in the middle of YouTube, why are you, why are you excited? What happens all of a sudden? Cuts off your show. The spots of the commercials, right? More now than ever. More now than ever, right? So I remember when my father, uh, when he was first experiencing YouTube, and every time a commercial came on, you know, he started cursing, right? Like, oh, man, keep going. But I was sitting there going, like, nah, I get this actually. And I do understand why you're frustrated, but actually, in five years, you won't be, because it's actually TV now. All they're doing is just switching over the framework, putting a lot of commercials there. Yes, it annoys us all now, but in five, it's, it's going to be just like TV. Like who who complains when we watch TV and the commercials come on? But it just is a part of TV. But you know, I, for me, I have a, I, I look at that in, in, a, in a positive light. I look at it like this: the commercials are what we use Line up with my show. Does this line up with what I'm trying to, you know, push forward? 
for. Where the person that's doing the show is critically aware of who they bring in yeah. to sponsor them. Yeah. Who they accept the sponsorship from. Yeah. Now, I think that responsibility has to be there. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't care who it's for. Right. They just want the sponsor. True. So they get the Welcome to the world. Yes. So this well, is I'm sorry. That's all right. So I'm trying to get an understanding yeah. of this new model. Right, right. So let's, I'm going to use an example. So let's say you've been a musician. Yeah. You come up with your own YouTube channel of uh, putting babies to sleep, right. kids to sleep. Right. Right. You're just in there just doing your, and it's a smash. Your viewership goes up a million viewers or whatever. Yeah. I don't know what's hot. Is you, do you, for your sponsorship, do you go out and you know, rolling to sponsor you, or you're saying because you have so many viewerships yeah. that and they see you and rolling, some rolling executive sees you playing rolling and yeah. says, Yo, that's the brother that we need to go and drop our hat on. <coughs> Is that kind of like how they, they're getting hit like that? It's both in. It's both in. So then, let's say four, you don't even drop four, let's say you drop two. Right, right, right. And, right, true. Uh, Ford sees you, yeah. but and they want to just come to you too as well. You would accept Ford as well. So you're saying because of your, your viewership. So yeah. it sounds like you really got to have, first you got to have that hit yeah. thing yeah. to have all those views. The yeah. silliness that we see where they have all these views. Yeah. You that's, just, that's the key. Yeah, that's the key. You got to have the hit. That's, and that's what I'm really trying to get to. Sure. Yeah. I got to try to really have instruments and phrase being the hit yeah. to have people come to me before I go. Approach yeah. You know, or some, you know yes. what I mean? You know, or something like that. Yes. It is it is definitely that first first and foremost, and that's we're gonna to get to it really and heavily. I know we will. And I yeah, know. but no, it's a yeah, good question yeah, and, yeah. and it's an open floor. So yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, you you first and foremost do have have to have something quality that people value. Yes. Right. Like all like anything like else. Like anything else. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that actually, because to be honest out of everything, that's the most important thing that I wanna to stress to people, right? Beyond beyond pulling the strings, beyond hacks, beyond like trying to do things to, to, to get it, it's like, just have something to say or have something to offer that's of value to people. Be consistent about it, and then it will, it will move in the direction that you need to. Um, one small sidebar too, just for, uh, hey Jones, how you doing bro? Um, one small sidebar, so we have, um, of course, drinks available right behind us, wine and water and soda and a few things. And on the fourth floor, there is, you can purchase food um, on the fourth floor. We actually want to have some samples from this brother here. Yeah, that's a good this food. Yeah, too. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, it is it is 100% about what you have to offer. And then after that, then it's an open playing field as far as like, if you have something to offer and then people start coming your way and get the attention, then you'll have sponsors reaching out to you. And then also you'll have the leverage to be able to reach out and say, hey, I'm interested in some things too, right? So it works both ways, right? So, um, but yeah, that's, that's the gist of that. Um, okay, the last two as far as who this event is for, successful business women, and men of yesteryear, pre-social media and internet. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I put that because, you know, it's, I find that, okay. One of the reasons why I'm standing up here today, even doing this, is that I realized that I actually have a gift when it comes to this stuff, right? Um, when I got, I got my first email address in 2006. I was like, okay, I see this internet thing is getting ready to take off. And I can't be left behind. So I was like, I don't know what this stuff is. But so I got my email address and then I started browsing. I started downloading music from the, uh, the sharing platform, Bear Share, Kazaa, and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if y'all remember that, but that was when, um, in order to get your music, you had, to, you had to go to this third party file sharing site and search for a song. If somebody across the country had it, you could download it from their computer, but you had to wait all day for it, you know, until it, until it downloaded. I saw um, the tail end of that. Yeah. 
So that was that was right before the um, the Napster, that whole Napster deal, you know, when Napster um, got sued for you know distributing music and all that kind of stuff. But I remember getting into it and just going like, this is this is the way. And then how, how you doing? And then as soon as that kicked off, I noticed something. That was 2005, 2006. Every year, and then it started becoming every six months, and then every quarter, every three months, and then every month, things were changing so fast. The new platforms were being developed. There was new way to good ways to do things. Um, it was just it was flying. Now. I'm so fascinated by technology that I just naturally have a passion for keeping up, right? I just, I love to, to toy around with these things. I love to play with them. So one thing I started realizing was that I naturally could keep up and I had a knack for it. But if that wasn't what you were into, and if you blinked, if you, if you closed your eyes for 30 seconds, you know, if you didn't get on the computer for, for a couple of days, you come back and you're like, wait a minute. The whole interface looks new, you sign in a different way, everything has changed. So what I started realizing was like, whoa, oh, if you don't have the time to keep up before you know it, you are oblivious. You have no idea what's going on. And yeah, I get it, right? So yes, because they're growing up in it. Right. You go like this. Like it's nothing. So I'll tell y'all a funny story about my daughter. So my daughter Aria, when she was when she was four, I was in my room and I was on YouTube and I started. That's when video conferencing first started uh, started uh, hitting the mainstream. You know, being able to do FaceTime and all that kind of stuff. So she was she was no, she wasn't four. She was three. She was two, one on three. And I never forget she was playing in my room and I was on the computer. One minute I was watching a video, the next minute I was video conferencing. And when I looked at her, she was, now she's real observant. So when I looked at her, I saw her playing and like studying the screen. And then one day she was playing and she said, hi, right? And the person I was talking to said, hi. And I was like, oh man, this is, because I saw what was happening. She was growing up during a time where her brain was able to decipher the difference between a person on a computer in real time and a person that I was listening to, even if I wasn't talking to that person. And I knew that, here it is, like they're growing up during a time where this is, I mean, it's nothing, it's a piece of cake for them. It's like the back of their hand. It's like, yeah, you just hit this button and you start it, and you stream, you send it here, you do this, and you're like, oh. But it's, it's pretty amazing because they're going to be able to do some amazing things. So that's why it's so good. Grab my thumb, I'm going to find an award. Tell them, it's so good. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what it's about. So, when I looked at, when I thought about successful business women and men of yesteryear, one of my deepest passions is to help people that are just like, I really want this, but it's moving so fast. And then of course, anyone who values free information. All right, so we're getting ready to go into the next, the next segment. And um, right before we do, I want to introduce Charles. So right before you came in, man, everybody introduced themselves, so we go, first say, Hello to you, brother. Thanks for coming through and hanging with brother. And uh, yeah, just wanted to get your name and okay. who you are. What you do. My name is Charles Thompson. I'm um, a chef and a musician. Chef and musician. I came. Yeah. He is very gifted in that. I yeah. see all the stuff in all my devices. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said all the devices. So I came to get insight on that. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. So, I appreciate you, man. What's the name of your uh, your business, your catering your, your business? Catering business is Thompson's Creative Culinary Concepts. And over there is uh, Seafood Gumbo yeah. and Royal Crab Cake Samples. So you put some business cards. Sweet. I cater in occasion. Sweet. So, and I'm doing a holiday ball yeah. the 27th of December. That's going to be like a red carpet affair. Um, right now, it's slated to be at Palladium. Fifty dollars and either semi-formal formal wear. There'll be a, a show band, ballroom dancing, DJ, comedian, and it'll just be fifty bucks for the, for the cash bar. So, okay, sweet. So what we could what we could really do right now, right at eight twenty-five. Um, I don't know how you want to give out the samples. 
Is it Amy? Just get them. Okay. Yeah, so they're, they're in like little cups. And you can just take it to the head. I mean, it's okay. so <laughs> <laughs> you might, could, you, could you possibly pass? Could you possibly pass? Yeah, that would be cool. And then, um, and I'm um, bringing people. So, and you said one is seafood and one is. One is seafood, one is raw crab. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's all seafood. So, you only eat seafood. I'm sorry. Anybody not eat seafood? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to eat the seafood. Uh, the crab cake's out. That's it. I'm okay. Salmon. You literally shellfish? Yeah. Uh, no, fish. Regular fish. Wow. Like the crab cakes, the shellfish, I can eat. The shrimp, so, so I can eat. There's, there's no regular fish in here. So it's there's only shrimp, crab meat, lobster. Okay. And which dish? Let me try the, the crab The gumbo. Let me but try the crab Here's the crab meat. Yeah, I'll try the crab yeah. meat. So while he's doing that, let me say this fish.
we're gonna go we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start talking about some uh, topics that that we're gonna be discussing and then we're gonna go into a QA kind of feel. Okay, so the very first thing is probably the most important thing to me, and it's, it's actually how I realize that I have a talent. The talent that I realize I have is creative content strategy. And the way that I found that out was in 2000, let's see, 2008, I got on YouTube. And when I got on YouTube in 2008, I was a musician that was putting together an, an instrumental, the instrumental backing track company. And what I saw was I had an idea to make instrumentals for people around the world that didn't have musical backdrops. And I started doing it in the gospel world. I started doing it in the old soul world and R&B. And I realized that I like to reverse engineer music. So I said, there's a lot of people out there that I know need what I have. And here's this thing called the internet. And we got YouTube. And I'm like, okay, here's this thing where I can put as many videos as I want and just put them out there and people will be able to just come across those videos and I don't have to worry about <laughs> what we were, okay, 2005, in fact, he's here right now, Kier Johnson, right, the, he's the guy who's the artistic director here, my best friend, Purple Honey Music. So he's upstairs now. In 2005, we sat down at my house and we were trying to figure out how to get on TV he had, <laughs> he had a, a, his cousin was like the director there. And so we were trying to figure out how to get on there. So we sat down and we put together like this music reels, about maybe 30, 30 tracks, all different genres. And we were trying to submit that. Our goal was to get on public access TV and try to get a half an hour spot. So we tried that, we tried that, didn't quite work out. 2008 hit, I'm looking at YouTube like, wait a minute. Forget to you one. <laughs> this and so what the internet has done to every industry, that's the thing, every single industry, is that it has removed the middle man from the equation. And so now there is just us as creators, and then there is our the people we want to touch, the legacy we want to leave, our clients, our customers, and people we want to influence. The middle has been removed from the equation. You think so? This is exactly what has happened. You don't think Facebook, YouTube has become the middle man? Well, my point. So I got you. Good question. All right. Good question. So what I mean when I say middleman is that right now you don't have to go to a uh, you don't have to wait in line if you're trying to get your message heard. Okay. Yeah. And you don't have to fight for everybody fighting for one spot. It's like more space. I, yes, more space. More space. Now, to answer your question on the whole other team, you took your glass off, but that was, I know, I know, I know where that was coming from. <laughs> I know exactly where it was coming from. And on, on a whole, on a whole nother, you were just, you and I, for I was just conscious, nobody else would have, yes, I hope yes, because it's a new industry, yes. So I know what you're getting at, but, yeah, from the, from the perspective of like, where we come from, where we were all fighting for attention to get, now we don't have to do that. Now it is literally left to your ability to whatever you want to create, you know, and whatever you want to show the world, and whatever you're not afraid to be able to talk about. So um, my point was, I'm looking at YouTube in 2008, and so what I did in, from 2008 to 2014 was I created 2,000 videos for YouTube. So I have over 2,000 videos on Yes. And then the one question, which I'm, I'm if I was to ask Symphony and Melody, if y'all if y'all had a question about my YouTube channel, what would it be? What would the first question be? If you wanted to know anything about my YouTube channel, if I said I'll tell you anything, what would be the first question? Be? <laughs> I'm sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. So, but I thought you were gonna say what, what most kids ask is, "Oh yeah, YouTube channel? How many subscribers do you have?" And I have fifty-four thousand on 
my, my first channel with the 2,000 videos on it. So what I figured out, and I created a six-figure business from that. Because what I figured out was, wait a minute, we have all the opportunity in the world. All we have to do is create, be creative, have something to bring to the table, and the world is out. It's at our fingertips. So I realized that my talent was creative content strategy. You know, I think about things in a slightly different way. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today, creative content strategy. And that is my strong point. That's why I put it first. Because above anything, I, I'm able to say, if I don't know something, if you have a question and I don't know it, just going to say, I don't know. And I'm going to find out. Because that's what I would enjoy doing. But where I'm really strong is whatever your idea is, my strength is taking that, showing you how to creatively put it into the system. And before you know it, it starts to go in the direction you want to go into. So we're going to talk about that the importance of building a brand. So, and I'm gonna try to keep everything more succinct, okay? The, the importance of building brand. It's important for every single person sitting here to build your brand. What I mean by that is your personal brand. And what I mean by that is that you have the ability to now bring any message that you want to anybody at any given time and do it the way that you want to do it. So the thing, no matter what you're trying to do as far as career, the thing that's gonna matter at the end of the day is how strong your personal brand is, how strong of a presence, how good content you have, that kind of thing. Because that's where everybody is, that's where your resume is these days. That's what people are wondering, right? Um, the next piece is uh, running Facebook and Instagram ads, boosting posts. So it is a real easy strategy to get almost anything you want to get noticed. And that's knowing how to creatively boost your, uh, your posts. I have something called the $1 strategy that, has, that I've been getting crazy results on. We're getting my content seen by a lot of people and more people coming to my place and starting to follow me. And, it, and I'm the perfect match for what they're into. All right, so we're going to talk about that. Um, document, documenting your life process. The most valuable thing that you have at your disposal for anything that you're trying to do, whatever your highest goals are, is documenting the process of getting it. One of the quotes that I put on uh, Facebook a while back is that your process is more potent than your final product. Okay. And y'all gonna have to forgive me because when I get this mode, I know that my mind is cold. So that's why the Q&A's will be longer than anything. And that's why I'm moving this fast. Okay, so your process is more potent than your final product. Every last one of us, no matter what industry we're in um, or we're aware of as far as our world, we come from a world where the most important thing was the final product, your dish, right? Your final dish that you brought, your radio program, you know, my song, you know. You, you all earrings on that day. That's funny. One day they were selling those uh -huh. so, yeah. That was the most important. It was like, if you wanted to be successful, you had to go into your hibernation place, work hard on what you want you know, work on, and then come to the public with a polished product ready to go, whatever that was. Nowadays, the sizzle sells more than the steak. Why? Because the fact that people now get to follow you on your journey is what makes that final song that I make after I've been showing you all the time in the studio and how I wrote it, it's what makes you connect with that because you've been along the way. What makes people follow your show is seeing how you think about picking songs, how you go about talking to artists, little meetings that you have with artists where you're like, man, I really heard your music here. Then when they finally hear your song on your Great. You have, first of all, more people that's there waiting, because that's the, that's the cutting of the rope, that's the, you know. And they follow the journey to get there. It's way more meaningful with your food, right? The final product is always, you know, boom, taste, serve. But I gotta take something. Yeah. I gotta take something. Okay. My process, my process being making that final product over and over again, and it yeah. makes it you? So, yeah, I definitely follow what you say about yes. the process. Yes. And I'm going to do more filming of the process right. to bring them on the journey, and then someone will get to eat the taste. That's the whole point. You know, and
and the reason why I, I stress this, like I literally just spend an hour just talking about this because it's and it gets so close. Because the the thing I realize I'm helping people out with mostly is mindset. The thing I'm helping out everybody with is mindset. And what I mean by that is we all have the same tools. So we came from industries where the process was not accepted. It was only the final product. Like as a musician, how was I gonna take you all on a journey 15 years ago of like how I made this, the song that I made? There was just no way, right? I mean, I could maybe film a DVD and try to sell it out of my trunk, but like, past that we had the medium. Now we have the medium. I promise you all that anything that you have in your mind that you want to be successful at, the, as far as people supporting you, whatever ways they'll support you, the way to get there is to take them on your journey and to make them involved in the process of getting there. Because people connect with a story. And I think, if, even if I was to say today, even as all you are sitting here today, I feel like every person here connects with me because of the story that I've been showing on social media. So all of us connect with the story. So the story, and that's why this is so good. Because symphony, melody, whatever you all want to do, the beautiful part is that in life, this will be always a tool that you're able to use to do whatever you want to do be successful at it or meet people or make as much money as you want, whatever. And in fact, it just started now, so you know, it's really good, really right? So, documenting your life and process. Now, here's what it takes. Everybody in here is afraid to do that. <laughs> Everybody in here is afraid to document your life. Yes, and, and I'm saying that I'm, I'm being, I'm being uh, presumptuous on purpose or something on purpose. The reason why is because I realized that when it comes to this kind of thing, a lot of us actually want to do more, but we either feel like, you know, you know I don't know, I'm afraid of judgment, I'm afraid of like, what people are going to think, or, you know, we, we're like, no, I'm not going to put all my stuff out there, which I respect the time, like, that's important. But at the same time, what we're a lot of times missing is that the way to where you want to, is to be more vulnerable, is to be more open, is to share more, right? So documenting your life in your process. And I think that I have a philosophy that every single person on earth should start a weekly vlog. It's just a video log of their, of their life and their, their process and their times. And we'll talk about how to do that soon. Um, building and nurturing relationships on social media. Whether we like it or not, no matter what world we come from, this is the new way to really build family and connections. This is no way around it, right? This is where I get it. I so get it. Your old, your old, whatever you call it. Yes, yes, the This is not. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Call it what you want. Call it what you want. Call it what you want. Right. Which makes sense, right? It makes sense. Here's the thing that's fascinating to me, right? One day I sat and I thought about it. I said, in, in 87, in 1987, we could only have one conversation at a time with one other person and maybe maybe two people if you had like, you on the phone, you had one person there. But now we have the ability to have like multiple conversations at the same time and share and talk and hold on. Like, to me, is the ultimate relationship building really tool. I don't know what you really think about it, right? If you use it in conjunction with just, you know, this kind of thing, being people on top of We have family meetings. Yeah, right. <laughs> all of us are uh, in different well, states, but we do want to, you know, um, to talk about whatever we, you know, get together right. or something like that. Like yeah. It's real helpful, right? It's real helpful. Um, social media etiquette is another topic. Um, that I, and, and again, this will be over the, not even all tonight, you know, but, but this will be what these, what these uh, conversations are about. So social media etiquette. So <laughs> I want to teach people how to be more polite on social media. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I want to teach people how to be more polite. Here's, here's, 
Uh, social media etiquette, right? I started a series actually. Um, I'll have to share it with you. I started a series where I'm posting like little social media etiquette like lessons. Like thou shall not leave a conversation after someone says something and then you just leave the conversation and don't like end it. Cause you wouldn't do that in real life. Right. And, yeah. And and the, and like and like post it in all caps. Like all caps all the time. That is annoying, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like yelling. Yes, it's like yelling, right. And it emphasizes it's, it emphasizes another talk. Yeah. If, if, if anything you want to be intentional about, you want to be strategic, I, I promise you. I do the average and I use three exclamations at the same time. Yeah, right. yeah the, you know, time. you have to you have to, right? So um, but I talk about this because here's the funny part. I'm gonna start doing. I, I've been said I was gonna do this. I'm gonna start doing parodies, like little funny sketch videos, where I basically take a concept, like for instance, if we have a conversation, you and I, and then we're talking on the phone, and I ask you something like, "Yeah, so where are you gonna be tonight?" Uh, no, you ask me like, "Yeah, so where are you gonna be tonight?" And I'm like, down at you know the gym's thing, and then you're like, "Okay, cool," and then I don't say anything after. It's just like I just walk around, right? <laughs> There's, so I'm gonna start playing that out on video to show like this is how it would look in real life. Because the truth of the matter is, and here's the point I'm getting to why I'm even harping on this. There's a lot of people, we're all using social media, right? But a lot of us are using it in very selfish ways. And I even, I even have to pay attention to that myself. Like I, I'm thinking about that myself with my interactions. Because everybody's, you know, on social media, using it in the way to what they're trying to do. But at the same time, everybody's just like, look at me, look at me, you know. And the important part is being able to like really build relationships and treat people well. I like, it's, I noticed recently, like there's, there's people, people will get an attitude with you on social media for certain, certain things, right, when it comes to how we do things. And um, it's just a new part of our, our social norms. So I guess I just feel like I'm one of the earlier people to talk about it from a sociological perspective. You know, and that, that's, I know I'm up, but that's where, that's where I'm getting, you know. Yeah, right? Because the bottom line is, no matter what, this is our tomorrow, this is our 10 years, this is our 15, this is our 20. So we might as well learn how to be better students. All right, quantity, yeah, yeah. There's still class, though. There's still class. 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 Everything would be interactive. Yes. We come from different class perspectives. Yes. That means, although we say we generally have a lot of similarities, we still have a class interest and class perspective that will be reflected when we talk about what we're believing. Right. What we embrace. Right. You know, that what people find it different. Yes. When they kind of think of something like this is a little different far from where I see it or how I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the struggle will ensue. Yeah. So how they conduct the how they with that yeah. discussion or right. the struggle right. Right. Say, right. Uh, really determine how much etiquette we have. Yes. Yes. And how it comes to Right. Yeah. 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 Those that are in the conversation and those that are on workers that are dancing. I agree. So that's, I feel like, I feel like I'm a part of a new generation that's trying to take the, the ethics, right, the manners, and put it and show people how to do it in our new, you know, world. Yes. Um, quantity versus quality. Um, that's the topic that deals with um, when Symphony and Melody, when y'all start making videos, when you really start helping to make videos, Mark, when you start making videos, you know, you said, when you start making more videos, dropping your wisdom, your yeah, algorithm. Uh, being able to being able to do that on a regular basis and give people a lot to think about, a lot to look at, a lot of patience to is important. And we come from a world where Many people are kind of afraid to do that because they're thinking about the quality. So many people are like, 
I, I want to share more, but I want the lights, camera, action. I want, you know, I'm afraid of how I look. I, you know, it's, it's really dealing with the next point of being insecurity, fear of judgment, all that kind of stuff. What I want to help people to do is to get out of their heads with that and just go forward with the goodness that they have created with the quantities of content. Um, the next part, insecurity, fear of judgment, procrastination, or overthinking. That's just talking about what we deal with when it comes to working with content. Um, using modern technology to the resources, that's just everything we're talking about today, plus some other things that I know that I, I want to be able to share to help you to uh, reach your goals. Um, the importance of consistency, I think that speaks for itself. Um, and then the last part, which really gets into kind of where you started, the meta um, podcast, blogs, you know, maybe like answering questions about like, what all of that stuff is about. So, um, yeah. That's that's really it. I'm gonna pause there. Thank y'all for. I want to thank y'all again for being here. Like, thank this you. is this is yeah. really cool. Thank you for giving us something because I just see something on social media. Yeah. You know what you're doing, yeah. teaching people. Right. It was like fifty something thousand. I'm saying, and I mean, I posted this a lot. Right. What you were doing, so that other people can. Yeah. So I think it's um, I, I think it's the I think it's like anything, which is why I, like it doesn't bother me at all, right? It's um yeah, and and for many people what's, now here's, here's here's what happens from here. So today is being videotaped, right? And the whole experience is being documented. Me and following my own formula, what I'm going to do is take those videos, chop them up. And we'll have someone to help me work the site. And then I'm going to disseminate those. And all the things that we talked about, yes, all the individual subjects, that's going to go out. And then people are going to, because again, that's where they're going to be looking forward to. Then they're going to see it there. Then it's going to make sense. And then it happens from there to the next time. And then it just keeps going and going and going. Because the truth of the matter is, this is information everybody needs. And, many, and more people actually know, more people wanted to come. But, you know, again, you know. That is See, just, I'm the one that being an overthinker <laughs> yeah. and insecurity-wise yeah. because nobody showed up. I get it. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, right. I, I, I'm, you know, this is why I'm here so that I can get out of that as well. Right, you know? for sure. And I definitely don't want them to be here anyway. That's it, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah, so that's important. They, they're, they're not yet to you. Right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> if they get it, it's, and they're going to take it with them, as they learn more, right. they be able to right. open it with you. Right. Yep. You're going to tell them what is happening. What's happening? Right. Yes. Okay, so here's what I'm going to, here's what I'm going to go from here. And this, this right here is going to be the, the, the last segment um, of the whole, right? So, and it'll be from now it's 854 to whenever, whenever we're done, right? I'm going to talk to every person who's here and then we'll just go. So, at the Q, we're at the Q and A part, um, and this is when I want to get really personal with your individual questions. So the way we're going to do this is five minutes. I'm actually going to start with you, Mark, so that I can answer at least one question for you before it's time for you. To so, uh, going back to what we were talking about right. as far as. So uh, there's a cost 
within that. Like if I create a show, you know, with it being online, I have to be cognizant that I have to drop the city of a creative artist material. Right? You know, my thing. So that's what I was uh, that's why I was talking about as far as spinning up. Yeah. You know, I just can't go out and just create a show. This is how I want to do the answer to praise show. Sure. Because that's gonna that's gonna be ten tracks and that's gonna be one of the people, well, you know, you see what I'm saying? Yes. Let me ask you a question. I, yeah. I, I, okay. Like you said, uh, where I hear you going is that basically with, with what you're trying to do, because of the type of material that you're using, right, like you said, you can't just go from radio, just create your own thing, and just go ahead and start spending the record from there. Right. I feel you on that. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I want to ask you, though, which I think will help me out. That makes sense to me, but let's start from a basic question, right? Which is, what's your, what's your, give me a goal, what's your goal, actually? So the, yeah. well, I, the, the overall goal is to have the instruments and praise global. Yes, okay. On demand. To have instrumental, instruments and praise global. global. Got it. Not just somebody that I use. Yes. It's restricted just to hear Sundays. Yes. Yeah. One more question, and then I'm going to give you something to think about. So, is it instruments of praise that's most important, that's global, or is it Mark Waldron's interest and passion, and it just happened to come out, and that, is it that, or is it that's your most, the most important thing for you is instruments of praise to go, to be global? Right now, so okay. it's not about me. I got it. Right. Okay. It's, not, it's not about me. It's not about it's you. About me. Okay. I'm not the I'm not the brain. I feel I'm the creative the brain. Yeah. The brain can live on yeah. to again right. the legacy yeah. of the, the children and the grandchildren right. and the great grandchildren. They can be programming in a hundred years from now. So there's two you know there's two ways for that to happen. One one involves you and one involves actually the station. It's like a station project. Right? Yeah, right, right. So from the station perspective, now, I know they have a website. So I should say, yeah. yeah. It's you. Okay. All right. So let me, all right. So I'll make it personal. Right? Yeah. The, the most important thing you can do right away is to start a podcast. Right. Right. Yeah, to start a podcast, and and this would this would be the start of your platform because eventually you have a YouTube channel. But it would be to start a podcast immediately, where every single artist that you have that you're spending on your show that you just start getting personal interviews with. And the reason why that's the case is because there's only so much you can control as far as in radio, right? There's only so much you can control. So the fortunate thing is, in your own platform, it's completely unlimited. And what you get to do is do something far more than just spin records and talk about people on the surface level just on the show. You get to get down deep yeah. and start caring deeply about them as artists, their, uh, what they're into, their story. They, in turn, because you're highlighting them, it, it brings your value up and then the outlet pours back into instruments of praise. Right, right. But the best thing you can do is build up your personal brand just as a personality who interviews artists, you know, and who really gets down in that. You, you can even, you can interview artists, you can have vlogs and videos of you going to certain artists' performances and that kind of thing, and just taking people on a whole journey. Yeah, yeah. And then what people get that they don't get in instruments of praise is this whole other reality this whole other world of just experiencing the artists and the music from a totally different dynamic perspective. And then from there, that gains attention because it's something nobody is doing. Right, right. And then when people want to just hear a station where you can just hear it as a rotation, then that's the easy part. Right, exactly. Because so, at the end of the day, it's like, it's like, wow, I, I got a chance to learn something about this artist. We were in this experience. My mom, mom is just this cool guy. And by the way, if after having this grand experience, I just want to listen to some music and then, and then it becomes the easiest thing in the world to give the recognition to. You got to bring a whole other reality to instruments of praise that's not there now. Okay, so now here's the thing. Yeah, follow up, right. Follow up. Yeah. Um, I'm not in this music, I'm not in my own. It's not 
not my top sure. I'm scared. It's just that's just not. It's just I'm right. not my. I am more like I'm not an introvert. No, I'm not an introvert. Good. But I've never really been a camera type of guy. Podcast doesn't require a camera. It's just audio. Yeah. Podcast. I'm not. I'm not Ed Brad. Podcast. You know I'm I'm better off. I'm better off hiring him. The best part. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a producer. Sure. But you're, yeah. you're a communicator, which is the most important part. You're a communicator. Yeah. Right? So what I'm saying is the best part about this whole internet thing is that you literally can fit it to you. That's why I say podcast, because podcast is just audio. So it's basically what you're already doing, but you have way more creative freedom. And that allows you to create a whole other deeper experience that you can't do on your time of radio. Right. And honestly, that's how you really get where you want to go because it's going to be unique because there's not a lot of people that's doing that in the way that you'll be doing it. Okay. And especially for the type of music yeah, and that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, right. right. I know John was honest. Yeah. Yeah, right. so, so, yeah, yeah. So anything you could say, well, I'm not good at this or I have an insecurity here, none of that will matter for like the information that I would give you and, and these kind of things. Because if you do a podcast, that's that's what you're already doing. Yeah. It's it's just it's just your voice, and it's just audio, and um, you're already a good presenter. Yeah. And right. you're already right. communicating with your audience yeah. through your voice. Right. Right. The so then the last part of the equation, then I know you got to run. So yeah. the last right. part is that is that uh, the beauty in this whole thing, when you get down to it, is that you'll be able to run this whole operation right from your phone. In the underwear, you know, to like, like anywhere you are. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is so that's the first answer to your question, right? There's a lot more things I can give you. But the first answer is if you want instruments of praise to go to the next level, and you're talking about your tugging of the rope, then it is you becoming even more personality as just an interviewer, a person who just cares about the art, like what you yeah, already yeah, care about. Yeah. But, they, but, but in a way that you don't have the ability to express on radio because you only have so much time and you have to follow another guideline that allows you to have some creative freedom but within the structure. That's your answer. Can I ask a question? Does that feel good? Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, come, we'll continue for that. In fact, I'm sorry. For, uh, so the next thing, the next thing we can do uh, is have a phone combo yeah. for my gym's podcast, and we'll actually we'll pick it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll call you, so. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for yeah. coming. Yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah. 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 I'm just. Would that help him get, get more attention, or would that help him just pull you together? Well, it Yes. Yes, I, I understand what you're saying. And, that, um, and, and I will yeah. interject. Yeah. You're right. But, and that, I, I have a vision and a, and a plan, but not in that world. Right. Okay. It is, it's not yeah. enough. It's, 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 no, 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 no. I, I have to read. Because that, you know, your vision plan, your, your, your plan is always ever changing. Well, and that, this is, this is a whole different. What he's basically saying, if I can clean it up, this is, this is what he's saying. It's good foundationally just for like, as a, as a structure, which you want to sit down and think about as far as how you're moving forward. But what he's saying is that past that, in the world of what we're talking about now, application, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't hold any weight as far as how you get more people to be aware and all those things. But it is good for ethic, though. It is good for like foundational, right. knowing where you're going. Hey, no. yes. So it, so, it is, so it has to have yeah. 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 um, yeah. the rest of the puzzle. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I need to do. Yeah. So appreciate it. All right, so cool. All right, so. 
Let's go to another question. So, another interview. Okay. Well, along with um, your experience with So the main thing they should do 
right now is to have their own, they can pick a platform. It can be TikTok, it can be, you all know TikTok already, you all like TikTok. That's, that's what they do for me. Um, but the best thing they can do is to have them to start documenting themselves daily, just doing those things that they really have fun, and just their life in general. Like just, just every day as they're growing and learning, you know, the little things they go through, the tough times, the good times. That's the most important thing they can do. Because one thing that I figured out about this whole social media thing, and this this right here is a this is a fun admitting admission right here. So about seven years ago, I couldn't understand reality TV to save my life. I was like, I hated reality TV. Like seven or eight years ago, I hated reality TV. But the reason why though was because the way that I was seeing it initially was like, I'm an introvert, so I'm naturally private, even though uh, most people don't even think that. Because it ran social I'm an ambivert now, so I'm extroverted on social media. So, <laughs> but my point is, I, I didn't like reality TV, but it was because the way that I saw it, it was people that was doing like outlandish things, things that were like, I would never show anybody that, right? I was judging, I was, the way I like to say it is, I was judging cars by the 1987 Grimm, right? <laughs> the Grimm was an ugly car, but I was judging the concept of cars by one car. What I happened to realize was, oh, wait a minute. This, this is just an open platform, and you can just use it for whatever your version of it. And I realized that people are entertained by regular life. People just, people just entertain by regular, everyday life. So the most important thing that they can do is to start documenting just their regular life, all the fun that they have, and those kind of things. They will, they will soon become known as like, as Melody and Symphony as the twin like, And then from there, anything that they want to do from there, they'll be able to continue on with that and just keep it going. So if they get into specific things like you're talking about, just from them having their regular life and having fun and starting to document it. It'll actually fall in, and they'll already have people that are tuning in. Yeah, it's the best thing that they can do. Um, they have phones, they have cell phones. Yes. They have an Android, an Apple Android. Yeah. They all just got to do an iPhone because they got to do the screen on each other. Right. So they switch every day. Yeah. They think the Android is like, yeah. <laughs> You like it now, like that is right <laughs> You said we go to what? That's what I get. I love it. I love it. So, if I, if I were them, right, this would be with you. They should start a YouTube channel. Right? And of course, I'll walk you through any of the specific files that you the whole thing. And all they need to do is every day just get their phones. Just, just have fun, or just, just have a regular life, and just start to be able to, you know, share their relationship, and just and start that process, and be able to just upload them right to their platforms, and just naturally go from there. They don't have to, they don't have to, none of that. It's just, this is just who we are. This is our life. These are things we have fun at. These things we like. These things we don't like. You know, and just to be able to start to. Cultivate it that way. You know, from there, they'll be able to, you know, friends and family and those their friends, they'll be able to start sharing those videos and, those, and people will naturally just start tuning in and following their journey. Because they, they're beautiful girls, they're fun, you know, they have fun, they're smart, you know, and you can see where they're going. And then, you know, the support, you know, people will start really enjoying this process. I think that I think that they should. I think that you all should um, think about a, a name, you know, that you might come up with a fun name, whether it's your name, you know, or whether it's some other kind of fun. You know, just 
think about what you would want to hear on your channel and together as sisters. And it just brings them. I have fun. And then, then from there, I'll, I'll keep talking to you all about their more ways to do that. But they should, they should start having fun recording their experiences. And if nothing else right now, saving them for, like I said, if we, we pick a platform, but it just stop being able to share their recording. Who do y'all think about that? Who do y'all think about that? Things that I did. That's really cool. That's really cool. Alright, so, okay. Any, any question you have? No, but Sir, you said. I, I want to come off with a little bit of this. Yes. Is when there's a there's you want to 
Okay, let me see. This is the first time I ever explained it. I like it. So, a hashtag is a popular statement, right? Um, so, for instance, right now, let's just say, say we were in the times of President Barack Obama. I don't want to say our parent president. I think I know why. And it's how it's Obama, right? So say, say, say Obama does something. He's somewhere for some event, right? And there's a bunch of people there taking pictures and taking videos and all that thing. When people go back and they start posting those pictures online, if they put the hashtag, the little number sign, and put Obama, then everything, everybody that tags that, well, everybody will see everything from that day. Yes. Everybody will see everything with that hashtag. So meaning that if it's if it's three hundred people at an event, well, and they all go home and they and like the people, yeah, if I if I say hashtag key reflections, then anywhere on the web that someone uses key reflections, mine will come up. So people use it as a way to like it was I believe it was created as a way to unify everybody to see one thing because. If, if you and I are at an Obama event, I might, I might, and I'm just, there's so many ways you can apply it, but I might take a picture, or I might have a video, you might not even know me, you might be on the other side of the audience. So, our content is not going to naturally come up together online, except for if we go with the hashtag, and then everything that uses that all comes up. So, if you look at it, it's deep. So, if I did a hashtag, my name on, yeah. on, on Instagram. Yeah. With my whole Instagram content come up, it's not Okay, so it's it's basically whatever you link it to is it's only as popular as whatever is connected to. That's the best way to put it. So meaning that if you if you create it now, your reason for creating it now, even though it has no popularity, would be because then you would tell people to hey, when you post this picture, when you have my event, when you eat before. What if you did this? What if beforehand, like, say if you're going to do this and then you go back in some kind of way, you make selected pictures, you alter something in the picture that will make it connect to the hashtag. Is that possible? What, you, what do you mean? Alter something in the picture? Like, uh, like I'm saying, what if, what if you gave the hashtag to people? What if you put content that it can connect to, pile it up, and then all of a sudden make it so it connects to all the content you want? Well, that's, to the, that's the point, actually. Right, that's, 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 that's actually the point of it. Right. The point of it is eventually, if you're, at, if you're at an event, and this is just one way we're just using it, but if you're at an event and different people have different experiences, you know they're going to post. If you tell everybody to use your hashtag, right. and again, that means that everybody that is looking for that stuff, like it all shows up for that whole kind of nice. experience. And it always will. Anytime anybody ever in history uses that, all of that stuff comes up in this big archive. So the, the thing I said similar to that was when, like, I had a birthday card with him, a photographer came, and he took tons of pictures of everybody. Yeah. And he said, and they would give you that, that website, some kind of website had my name on it, or Charles, or some kind of thing he created, and it had everyone's picture. That's the point. That's what I'm saying. Wow. The hashtag is the thing that pulls it all together. Because as long as that is the one connecting thing that makes unrelated things be connected. But but it's just what happens. Of course they're related. That's the reason for it. But that's the deal. Okay. Yeah, that's the deal. That is the deal. That is the deal. So, alright, so we'll we'll come back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. We did that special. Your second question, Charles, was what she's saying is that your second question was that you have an event and during that weekend you're trying to figure out how to get way more exposure to it. So there's a couple ways you can do that. One now is the tagging thing, right? Right. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this tagging thing real quick is because tagging, I think, is the, the thing on social media that's used with like the least amount of uh, etiquette. Yeah. And I even am guilty of that myself. Like, now I, I pull way back on tagging because 
those of us that know that you can get the attention of someone that you're trying to get to look at, we've used it and in some ways abused it. But the best way to use it is to only tag people who you really know are really interested. Yeah. Or everybody else you ignore. Know. I have it. It's one of those places, again, even myself, I'm even guilty of it. And I, I, I really started to pay way more attention to it. Because again, it's one of those things where you, you could be uh, expanding or you could be putting information in front of someone and bombarding you. So you're being um, intrusive, you're close and disrespectful or something, you know? And it's, again, it's, it's no different than if we're in a regular conversation and I just come out of nowhere and just interject and just go, it's the same thing. It's, it's, no matter what's going on. You know, yeah, it, and it's no different. A lot of times, you can watch yourself if you always in that mode like probably we are. Right. And it'll be an incident or something, an episode where somebody talks about something, then you right. talk to them, and then you say, by the way. Yeah. And if you really not, it's not time for about something. It's really not time for about the way. That's right. that's breaking that. Right. Every, what you're talking about, I have so many conversations in this. this now, I'm thinking about bringing that again now. Yeah. If it's your birthday, and I say happy birthday, and I say, uh, how about this little birthday dish? I don't think that's bringing that again. It's still saying birthday. Yeah. Birthday. As long as. It's related. And as long as it's, it's sincere, right. and like you said, right. it's just it just has to be with etiquette and manners. It just has to be with mindfulness. That's what I'm looking for. Right. Has to be with mindfulness. Right. And so that's why now I'm gonna tell you something, right? So musicians and artists. This is for every musician and artist watching. Musicians and artists are not selling music, right? Like they like to, because everybody is just going. Buy my music. I have something. Buy my music. And I'm really gonna brainstorm. I wanna do an album. And this. This this the, this this goes against everything because what it does is it bombards people with information where you don't even give them a chance. Shut them down and they say no to all of them. Because they know that they're seen by that expression. You don't really care about them. You just care about like what you get out of your dreams. Your life, your share, your mind of the music. And that's for a person that's a lover, what you, what you eventually do, and this probably has happened to you, you just become numb. You see it, but you, you become numb to it, except for the stuff that you really actually care about. <clears throat> I, I saw something happen to me on Facebook in 2012, like, right? I'm looking at the screen, and I'm going about my business, and I start to, like, my, my daughter comes in, and she looks at the screen, and she goes, Ooh, a game. And I go like, what are you talking about? And she's like, right there. And the game, of course, it was it was right on the right hand side, right? But the thing was, my brain learned to, to shut that out because it, it wasn't something that I was interested in. And that's what the brain does, the brain does. So what's happening to so many musicians and artists right now that are like, I put my music out, I say, hit my music, you know, hip hop, why is it not so? Because People are becoming numb to these cold advertising. People are becoming numb to this. And this is with events. Like how many events, I can't tell you how many events like I get invited to that like if my life depended on telling you the last one, I couldn't tell you because I, I block it out immediately. Because I know this is something that doesn't have anything to do with me or that I'm not interested in. And this person is really just interested in just selling to me, just getting me to life. That's, that's insensitive, right? Um, so yeah, tagging, man, tagging, like, only tag people who you really know, really care about what you're trying to offer with your event. So do you, but do you, do you consider sharing something on Wednesday the same as tagging? So it's funny because I'm I, I consider sharing something on Messenger. Do I consider something like sharing on Messenger the same as tagging? Um, I, I put it through the same filter. Okay. So basically, it's it's more personal. 
But there's so much. What are you doing? Deep. How could you know who wanted to go? How do you know what? Who? How could you know who may want to go and who may not? Well, That's easy. 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 Let me tell you how. And this is what this is for everybody in here, no matter what y'all want to do. Become a storyteller as opposed to a, a, a marketer or as opposed to become a storyteller. What I mean by become a storyteller, you have to invite people in on an experience. Well, I kind of do that. I right? even do that on a daily basis with showing my own meal. Yeah. Like dinner at the Thompson's house or dinner at the chef's house. So that that's kind of what you're talking about. Yeah. But I'm letting them know the food part of my life. Right. And then and then promote that I'm a chef and I even feed my own food to me. Yeah. So making them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That type of thing. So that's so people get familiar with that, like people I don't even know, and then I start learning the people. Right. And then those are the first people that I show events that have been called food that I'm educating. For sure. But the way that you'll know who else will be interested in it is most people just keep posting the same thing. Here's my event this Saturday come. Here's my event this Saturday come. Here's my event. What I'm, what I'm talking about is be a storyteller where you take people from the beginning of the experience. Like, first of all, what is this all about? Where did you even get this idea from? Just sit down and just talk to the people for a second. Because people care. People care when they see that you care. That's what people are like, okay, I'll, I'm interested. Because it's not just about like, what can you do for me? It's like, you just want to share a so, little bit of so I've had to think about this myself. I, I, I now, only every now and then do I put like, okay, I have a new album out and then hit the rest of it now. is just like, look, this is in 2017, like I was, I wrote this song and it was just, and people, people see that's, it, it develops a relationship. So can I, can, can we, can we, can I show you an example and you tell me if you feel it's insensitive? Or let's let's wait till after we finish. Then you and I just go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, oh, something else. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And like, right. So that's creating a Facebook event. Right. Yes. Yes. But people. Well, well, that's what I was going to say. The, the, the problem is that, see, everybody now is using the tools, but a lot of us are now just using the tools in a very cold and static way. I get a million invites, and I don't pay. Oh, the, the, the inbox, the Facebook messenger that you're asking for, right? Um, oh, yeah, I got to put my sample, I got, I put my sample to the side. Man. I got to put my sample to the side, man, so I'll miss out on my sample. Did you get that lesson? <laughs> um, so I definitely want to answer this question for you, Charles. And this is for everybody, by the way. This is for everybody. Charles asked the question, when it comes to uh, messenger, the inbox, when somebody's putting your message in your inbox, do I look at that in the same way that I look at tag? So yes, from the perspective of etiquette. I don't know about y'all, but there are so many inbox messages that I do not read. I just can't. And that's even, and that's, and the more exclamation points, the less I'm gonna read. Because what people are doing is they're basically, they know like, everybody's like, I want you to see what I'm, so everybody's like, you gotta look at this, you gotta see this, like, look, like, look, I'm just like, no. Like, because the only way to have a good experience on social media is you gotta block out a lot of this other kind of stuff. So Charles, the answer to your question is that the inbox messenger, you have to have the same manners with that that you have with everything else. Okay. Too many people just just send a message after message after message in their um, in, in everybody's inboxes. And again, it's intrusive. Right. It's, it's, it's like, you just like, and, and but the, you, you know, know like, I hate you more than that. Stop it. I hate those, I hate those just cliche card things. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh my God, that now, that right there. I, so he's talking, he's talking about a chain letter. I put up a Facebook post one time, and I, I forgot how. Some people, that's all they do. They don't even comment. Uh, they just, you look at their thing and it's just chain, chain letters. Yeah, chain letters, yeah, you get no attention. Okay, so it's 9.35 right now. I want to I wanna start rounding it out because I, I feel good about our time. I don't want to be too long. I feel good about where we are. So, what I'll do is um, I'll answer a few more questions 
right? Or, or this this last 10 minutes, we'll wrap it up. 9.35 to 45, then I did that with this thing, whatever, if anybody didn't know. Um, but these last 10 minutes, um, what do I want to say? Okay, so, as we, as we, as we take, like, this started conversation, right, this is the first conversation, there's a few important things I want everybody, I want us all to walk away with, right? Number one, we have the opportunity of a lifetime be able to share our memories, our legacy, build our businesses, like accomplish our dreams. And it's not what you have, but it's how you use it. Okay. So we all are thinking about we all are thinking about being the best stewards possible with this being the first thing. Second thing is looking at it for positive things. Yes, there's a bunch of negatives to all this stuff. There's negatives to anything in your life. But, you know, we judge about how positive it is. Um, everybody take a step in the direction of vulnerability. Share something that, like, you were previously a little bit afraid of before. Because I promise you, your next, like, whatever you're trying to reach, it's in that next life personalizing of the experience, right? So that's that, and um, yeah, I guess I, I guess anything else that comes to me, you know, anybody have any other questions, and then we'll, we're we'll pretty much, uh, you know, I think, first of all, everybody's not online for the same reason. Everybody's not online for the same reason. I mean, the same thing. Some people just want to be some people want to be informed. Right. Uh, some people just want to be entertained. Yeah. Some people want to be uh, made aware of. Like, yeah, what y'all, what he's doing. Right. You know, where yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so yeah. I think um, and then a lot of people on social media are yeah. frustrated. Right. You know, a lot of people are frustrated. Mean, yeah, I mean, really want to shape the world to their view. True. And uh, adamant about yeah. the frequency. It's a mixed bag, isn't it? Yeah, it's it a, is. You know what I mean? It's, it's because that's a good observation. It is. That's a good observation because different people are on online for different reasons. Some people are there to, like you say, totally just project their message or you be adamant and strong about it. Some people are there just to observe it. Some and the reason why I think it's so important what you just said, even as you reminded me of that, is it shows why it's even more important to be mindful. Because everybody's there to have different experiences. And you can really, you can enhance, you know, it's a double-edged sword. You can enhance someone's experience, or you can totally destroy their experience. And what you just said, I appreciate that, because I even take that person, and it's, it's really good. It's what we all should be thinking about. You know, you know, man, I, point. I, point. I, I enjoy most everything you do because you always share. You know, you always share. And you, 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 the, the word music, I yeah. learned something about the word music. Yeah. The, the prefix is uh, a music. Uh, 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 okay. It means inspiration. It's a prefix move. It's inspiration. Right. And, uh, so when, when I say that's what music does. Yeah, that's what it does. Uh, so that's what you that's what you do all the time. Almost all the time. My motto, so you said I I appreciate you for those observations. My motto is I got a couple mottos. What I know you know, and if I can help somebody, then my yeah. living is in the vein. Since I know my living is in the vein, then I'll just spend my time helping. <laughs> Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you. Y'all have any any last questions? Any, any anything that I can answer for you all about anything? All right. Y'all are the Thanks, you Okay. So. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get a quick picture of real quick. Okay, 
So, so with that, what I'm going to do is to make the time. This feels really good too. Did everybody enjoy themselves? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Charles, next time so, we can bring some forks. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, you said, take it to the knees. Take it to the knees. Like, like, so, so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do here, I, I want to thank everybody for being with us so, so much. And what I'm going to do is we're going to finish up. I'm going uh, to grab a picture with everybody. And then we're going to say goodbye to each other. Appreciate yeah. it. And oh, one last thing too. If, so if you all are interested, um, this if you are interested to help me with the efforts of this thing, then it's the info there. If you make a donation or whatever, if not cool, doesn't matter. We're going to spread the information. Keep it going. I got a video. And, and, um, and then last but not least, um, I want everybody that doesn't have one of these already to have one. This is my, of course, my social media info and all that kind of stuff. And on the back, on the back is, I'm sorry, on the back is the rest of my world. And, yeah, appreciate you, appreciate you. Oh, yeah, I'm about to say, thanks. <laughs> the, the, funny, the funny thing is, as long as I've been touching you on Facebook, I have never snapped a picture of you until I saw you. I put it in my phone the other day. I appreciate you, guys. I love it, man. Thanks, man. And then, and then the new project is out, y'all. The Key Reflections project is out. So, uh, yeah, I've got these available. They're 15 and they're online as well. And I'm super excited because I'm getting ready to start traveling around the city and doing these whole kind of concerts. So, thank you, y'all. I'm going to rest. You said you're going to make a DVD out of today's. It's going to be, it, it won't be a DVD, but it'll be all online on YouTube. It'll be all the places where, yeah, and I'll share. And then you said, next events, third, well, of course, every Thursday. So, but as far as here, we're at George Washington, D.C. Yeah, we're in 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 uh, January, I'll tell you what it is. I'm going to take this break real quick. Thank you, everybody. Everybody online, I appreciate you all. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us. It was a blast tonight. Look out for all the content tonight because we're going to post everything. And of course, you can replay this video and drop me questions. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to get to the questions here. I didn't have my person who was going to read the questions off. But uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. The first gym symposium, super happy. And drop a line, let me know what y'all think. All right, peace.